So you like share. Yeah, I'm just like can't. All right, you all ready? Yeah. You all ready for this? <laughs> Welcome back to Rat Talk, ladies and gentlemen. I am the host, Matt the Rat, and this uh, week, yeah, this week <laughs> co-hosting with me is the beautiful Amanda Cano. Oh, Welcome back. And uh, today our, ga- our guest, <laughs> <clears throat> God, man, this is already a great start. Our guest <laughs> today is, I'm not even drinking I, either. I have coffee in my hand right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Ray is in the uh, studio with us today. <laughs> hey, Hello. how's it going? How's everybody doing? Yeah, uh, if you've listened to previous episodes before, she is a returning guest. Uh, she's coming back again with uh, even more stuff. If uh, uh, you remember, if listeners remember, she is an actress. She is in the entertainment industry, and so I am very looking very forward to to what you have uh, w- what you have going on now. So how's how's life been treating you since the uh, since the podcast? Because that was only um less i mean less than a year ago it was probably only been less about than like six months ago yeah it was I probably like. only like six or seven months maybe yeah. so yeah. i mean i mean so i'm you uh, you personally reached out and said that you wanted to I'm come back <laughs> on because you had more to talk about yeah so how many more how much have you done in the last six months then um i've done two movies uh one actually with adam sandler that comes what? out next month. Yeah. No way. Uh, and like, did you actually work with Adam Sandler yeah. in the movie? What? Yeah, he's really. He kept calling me Avril Lavigne. Oh, God. <laughs> <Avril> Lavigne. <laughs> yeah. Why, and, though? Well, because it's a movie that takes place in the 90s in the entertainment industry. And it's called uh. Sandy Wexler. And he plays um, somebody. I think it's a producer that's like looking for new talent and everything. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, he thought Avril Lavigne was in the 90s. So he just kept I mean, calling me Avril Lavigne, and I'm like, he wasn't <laughs> uh, far off. I mean, uh, uh, I'm I mean, like, okay, mm-hmm. early 2000s, yeah, it wasn't 90s, far they all blur together. Well, it wasn't far off, but that's that's awesome. What uh, what what other one did you do? Uh, I did a horror film. That's Those going are straight always to fun. Red Box. Yeah, it was about um, six like high school friends that come back for their high school reunion, and everybody dies. So sounds like, like one of them's movie. a killer, yeah. kind of. Uh, yeah, sounds like, like sounds that's like a that's horror the movie. Most I could say I'm like <clears throat> everybody dies. Okay, so now that you're done projects of like different genres, because before it was mostly like kid stuff, right? Like yeah. it was all Disney Channel and yeah. So being now being an experienced actress in different genres, how would you compare horror to you know what you used to do before? Because, uh, I, I mean, personally, personally, uh, we, you know, I, I've worked on horror films before. So as Amanda, as yeah. far as like independent, you know, little horror shorts. Yeah. And it, I, I can't. It's the funnest thing for me. Like I love I, I used to be. I, well, I was a werewolf. Like that was one of my first paying jobs at, in a in a maze. <laughs> and um, and, you know, getting dressed up, all the make makeup and everything. So that that's I feel like I would look more forward to working in horror than other movies. Um, like how was it how was it actually doing it i mean it was fun i mean it, it's fun to be able to do the different types of things and switch it off and switch it on but like it comes back to it being that um i was doing three different projects while doing the horror film mm-hmm. so it's like switching on from like this horror film like you know being frightened we don't know who i mm-hmm. am or who's like killing or whatever uh, and then turning on just like this happy go lucky like pop star, and then like switching all the way back off and being a part of like a kid show. Hmm. So it's just like being able to like switch it off to like switch it back on to something else, and mm-hmm. then like have this full time job. But and then, <laughs> but you would say that it's all equally, you know, it's all equally yeah, fun. It's I equally mean, doing exciting because they're all so different. Mm-hmm. That it's just I don't think I could pick which one would be my favorite. Keeps things interesting. Yeah, too. it's definitely mm-hmm. different though but uh, I it mean, was my first horror film so i feel like it was fun 
Also, I feel like when you're working on a kid show, you can't really be, you know, your I guess yourself. Like you have to kind of be a role model. Yeah, and then you know, and, and something you're like shit, and you're like, wait, just kidding, fudge yeah. <laughs> yeah. fudgesicles, exactly. Uh. You know, and then you and then you go into this other, you know, this other uh, persona, this other, uh, well, you know, every mindset. Other word's like, Fuck. Yeah, every other word is like shit. God damn it, God, what the yeah. who put this coffee here? <laughs> yeah, you know, shit like definitely that. switching that up is challenging, um, depending on like how you studied. So I think like me being mm-hmm. like a method actor trying to like tap into everything is hard <laughs> yeah i mean and it's some that that's some you've been studying acting for quite some time now you know yeah. how, how do you do you feel like you're you're getting the hang of it being able to switch characters on command or you a know a lot better than i was probably like a year ago mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but then again it's because i wasn't like ranging in different things it's like okay you're gonna play this like 17 year old forever yeah and then you're just like well i'm like starting to you not know, look 17 anymore and <laughs> So you were you were very typecasted when you first started out. Oh like yeah, you were totally. You and know, you were typecasted as the the young seventeen kind of. Yeah. Um. Well, like I was telling you, I had done like the last time recap. Uh, Girl Meets World. Mm-hmm. Forever. Oh, okay, that show's so cute. Yeah, I mean, it was. It definitely was. But then it's just like you know, the main character one was like fourteen, and the other one's like sixteen, and here I am, twenty four. <laughs> so like, yeah, Be- you know, pretending to be their like, age. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, okay, you know, and like they're really great, but at the hey, same you know, time, what? it keeps you. It keeps you in the times. All right, that's what it does. Yeah, it was definitely, <laughs> and then um, I think right after that, the first thing I did was Masters of Sex. So then I'm like, okay, like this is the first thing kind of like stepping out of Mm -hmm. the zone of being a 17 year old. And what's Masters Masters of Sex? I've never heard of that. I know, I've never heard of it. I I think it's on HBO. It's very adult. Oh, okay. I think I I, I think I have heard of it now. Yeah. And crazy. Yeah. It was like a complete, like, very, yes, it's very adult. Exactly. And I think that's kind of when um, my agent start started to realize, like, okay, she's not, like, a kid anymore mm-hmm. if, like, they're picking her to do this. So then they kind of started <laughs> submitting me, and, like, it's been very, like, even. I've been, like, still kind of the 17-year-old, but then also kind of, like, okay, she can still be 24, yeah. too. That's, that's a good kind of place to yeah. be in in that age because it just gives you more variety. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and more I'm work. Just, like, I'm sick of being, like, you know... Well, it's like going back. If I'm going to go into an audition room with a 14-year-old for like a 16-year-old, obviously they're going to go with the 14-year-old nine out of ten times. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. I a mean, a lot of the times they will though. Uh, well, actually, I, well, I feel like want it depends on what kind of movie it is. Like for, for example, Super Bad, that what? is adult content and everything. Most of those kids that were supposed to be in high school were well over, well, well into their 20s. You know, so I feel like yes, if it was that kind of movie. They would obviously pick you because you you can handle the adult content and everything. But in the category of being a Them kid show or me to Disney Channel repetitively, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like every for, time I'm being yeah. made out by like this fourteen year old and fourteen year old <laughs> shit that <laughs> your parents <laughs> paid for to get in there. Right, <laughs> mom screwed the director. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's exactly that's why I'm like um, the last See, six like, months shit have like been that actually happens too. Like, yeah, you know, and stage mm-hmm. moms screw mm-hmm. the screw the director. You know, I haven't walked into that <laughs> one yet, <laughs> but definitely there's. I've worked with a lot of stage moms, and it's like, okay, your child just wants to be a child at the mm-hmm. same time, you know. And like, dude, stop God, forcing your dreams on your kid. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you're like, living like, through like, dude, your child. And you know, go get a Sunday, like enjoy your day for the you know, like your acting is done. But I think that's that's why I've advanced more in the last six months than I have in the last three years because I've been able to like be with my age range, you Mm -hmm. know, and feel like you can thrive more. Yeah, whereas like when I'd go in there and be with like a whole bunch of 15 year olds, I'd be like, okay, this is kind of not my, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) but I have found that like with 15 year (laughs) year olds ever smoke a cigarette before, (laughs) (laughs) you ever been inside of a bar? Can you? (laughs) Can you? (laughs) Exactly. It's interesting that you say that they usually pick younger kids because I found like Girl Meets World, for example, aren't they like supposed to be in middle school Mm -hmm. or didn't? And you're saying they're what, 16, 16 years old? That's high school. Um, Some of them, it's like very split. Uh, Two of them are in high school and then two of them are in junior high. 
Okay. I think at this point now they're all in high school, but um, the way they have like their actual school school um, set up is mm-hmm. there's three different ones and like obviously they have their younger kids and there's like a room for them to do elementary school and then mm-hmm. their center room was them to do junior high and then they had like a third room that was for high school. It's yeah. really weird. I just think mm. it, it's interesting because I often see like that with Disney stars, especially with the females, they're usually older girls playing younger girls. It's just uh, as far uh, as what I maybe maybe not so much this generation, yeah, but maybe like the say, generation yeah. before with uh, Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, and all of them. They yeah. were a lot older. It was definitely like that little click, and now like between both of like the children networks, um, they're a lot younger. That's good. Mm. I mean, I think it's kind of good that they're younger, at least for my personal. Yeah. Because um, I know like little girls watching that show, they're like, well, why don't why don't my boobs look like that? And they're like, yeah. well, honey, she's <laughs> she's 21. 19. She's 21. Yeah, <laughs> they don't quite get that. They're thinking yeah. like, why don't I look like her who's on TV? And it's like it's unrealistic because real 14 year olds don't well, look like. I still <laughs> think some of the people they do go with. Um, I was just talking to someone about this the other day is um, they're don't know how to like transition their Disney stars or like the kids stars. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like that's why they run into so many issues. Is that I, you're actually, gonna be I the feel like kid? that's such a common thing too, is that, you know, Disney, Disney stars who are finally grown up and everything and trying to, you know, expand the role, you well, know, I, just get out. It's and, their and agency squishing as much as they can mm-hmm. out of like this poor child, you know, turning into, you know, I was <laughs> actually watching sons of anarchy the other day. Oh, and Ashley Tisdale is in that show. Yeah, right. Dude, I had no, I, like, I had no idea. I, yeah, I saw. Her, I was like, dude, no way. Is that so? I got an IMDb real quick, looked it up. I was like, dude, <laughs> like she, you yeah. know, like she was one of those. She was especially her. She was one of those people that probably could have taken her career a lot further had you know she played her cards right. I guess, but yeah. now now she's taking punches in the mouth by bikers and <laughs> hey that's work and she, she's on getting FX. work she's not on that's a major show one of the show. last things that's one of the last things she's ever done though and she was only on two episodes i mean you know like it's it, it's kind of it, it sucks and mm-hmm. works work mm-hmm. yeah i feel like disney either makes or breaks the star yeah. depending no, it's for sure they either mm. lose their shit but i mean they'll come out famous for it or they'll just kind of fall off the face of the earth and that's that no, it's totally true. My sister and I were just talking about Amanda Bynes, and we're kind of like, "What happened?" Wow. And she like, yeah. was like, "So." <laughs> I have not heard that name yeah, in a long time. Yeah, and then she like went through a crazy stage, and she's just like, "But like, if you think about it, people like her, they only watch like the Amanda Show, and then she had like a few other movies that came out after that. But when you think of Amanda Bynes, you think of the lobsters and the, you know, yeah. yeah. So you don't think of her other stuff. And she's Amanda, like, so please. imagine what happened Amanda, please. Mm-hmm. after that. And yeah, I'm like, that's true. I'm like, I never would have thought about that. Like, you don't I, think, I think of, like, the next. Her last, what was her last move? Her last move, I think, was, I think was Hairspray. Hairspray. I, I'm pretty sure that was, was the at last le- At one. least her last big role, you know, where that she was a supporting remember. role. That we remember, yeah. Yeah, that we, yeah, yeah exactly. That we at least it's remember. It's interesting. I, we don't really know what happened to her because it, se- it seemed like she was great. She was fine. I mean, she started out as a kid star and then she mm-hmm. started doing more age appropriate work. Like she did. She's the man, which is a cute little teen yeah. flick and hairspray. She kind of was breaking into that like little teen flicks. But then all of a sudden out of nowhere, she just dropped off the face of the earth. And I guess there was went a, crazy. A underlying mm-hmm. mental health issues. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at least she's probably doing better. I mean, we haven't heard anything, so <laughs> <laughs> praise the Lord for that uh, one. Uh, last I heard, she wanted uh, Drake to uh, yeah, murder I know. her. I was just like, <laughs> what, was that mo- what was that thing she said about Drake? I was trying to think. Jeez. <laughs> uh, you know? <laughs> it's like, I wonder how they get to that point, though. Because you, you never... Uh, I think the money at a young age. Mm. But then also there's that thing... Um, that maybe not a lot of people know about, but like the Coogan account for children. So I wonder what at the point, because like what, however much money they make, a portion of it goes into account they can't trust till they're a certain age. Oh. So I'm like, if they can't touch all their money and their parents manage like the other half that they would receive, like where, you know what I mean? I feel like me yeah. at 18 or 21, whenever I would receive money would be like, oh, let me invest this in something smart, like property or, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not like, yeah, let me go do all the drugs under the moon. Or, you know what <laughs> I mean? Or let me buy a fucking theme park or something. Yeah, so I'm just like, where does it, like, transition and where does it, like, unclick? 
I mean, I guess it all comes down to like if they're raised right. Yeah. But then growing up in front of a camera, I'm sure it takes its toll on yeah. someone's mental health. That's kind of why I think about Amanda Bynes. Like she was, uh, she was definitely, she was a comedian as yeah. far as like in the, the kids spectrum, you know, she did, um, she did her, uh, Amanda show, which is like, you know, like a, yeah. like a little special, they did their shorts and it was kind of like all that, which she was also on. Um, I wonder if she was depressed too. Like <laughs> through all of that. Maybe. I, you, you never you but never then you know. go the other way it's just like so the twins from disney channel um the little boys oh um, um dylan um, and cole sprouse yes so my boyfriend personally knows their dad oh. and s- they were both like normal raised normally the dad's a great man you know that like kind of managed their careers and everything and what they both end up going to nyu mm-hmm. and are doing their own things now so it's just like could it like reflect back to how they were raised and be like I, yeah, I think a big part of it is how how they're raised, and I mean they didn't they weren't like overly successful. They had their, I mean I don't know. I mean yeah, they didn't they didn't have like clothing lines like, and yeah. they didn't have like concert deals like yeah. uh, Miley Cyrus when she was going through her whole Hannah Montana. I just thing. think with Miley Cyrus, I think they squeezed every penny that they could out of her, yes. and that's why she just did not give a shit what happened. She was just like, whatever, like, I'm done with this, you know? I think they kept the show going for too long. I think that might be a big factor yeah. in well, it, I too. I was reading something that, like, at, like, four, 13 or 14, whenever she started, they would, like, jam coffee down her throat, <gasps> and it's just like, it's like this young kid that shouldn't be having coffee. Yeah, young kid who shouldn't have to work that long, but it's yeah. okay because she has a parent who is on set twenty four seven, who yeah, is in front of see, the, who's on I camera with her too. I think that's what it was though for her. Um, usually, like for people under the age of eighteen, they have to have a parent on set. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for her, they considered her dad being on set with her, so they didn't follow the rules they should have. You yeah, know, because then it's just like if, you know, my like mom or dad was there, they'd probably be like, OK, it's past her six hours that she's supposed to be here because she's a minor. Yeah. Whereas you know? so dad, who is in front of the camera also would be like, nah, it's fine. Let's yeah, keep going. exactly. So I just think like all those things come into play and you shouldn't mix that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she just was given a large sum of, sum of money at such a young age, yeah. essentially. I mean, I think she grew up to be, like, great, minus her, like, crazy-ish stages. I mean, helping yeah. the right, I think, the I right think causes and stuff like that, I to think an extent. what she struggled with the most is because it's for Disney um, actors and actresses, more actresses than actors, because like you said, the guy, the uh, Dylan and Cole, they came out okay. Yeah. But I think there's a different set of standards for the girls who come out. Because there's more of a following. There's one, there's more of a following. And two, I'm sorry, but girls' bodies are more sexualized. I'm going to go super feminist yeah. for a second while Matt is in here. Because <laughs> but, but would be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But no, totally. I mean, you they, have to think of the stuff they wear, the stuff... Yeah, they totally do uh, sexualize those little girls and they kind of like they walk that fine line of being like, well, they're sexy, but it's like Disney sexy. It's like just appropriate enough. It's like it kind of like has that appeal. Yeah. And then um, I think in Miley Cyrus's case, she was she reached that point where she was 17, 18, still playing a kid. And she's like, fuck, I, I want to. Like, yeah. I want to wear fishnets and pierce my nipples and get a bunch of tattoos and yeah. be a, a 19, 20 something. But but it's not OK because she has to have this like because well, she, had she had a contract to have like long brown hair and like all this like crazy shit that you were like, this shouldn't be contracted in because really I'm a human. And I didn't even realize they can contract. Mm-hmm. contract stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, they can do anything for those contracts. They can. Yeah. She probably wasn't allowed to get tattoos or change anything. To, so yeah, and then that's probably why she's like, all right, bye yep. here. <laughs> I, also, I also heard a theory, a theory, <laughs> I heard a theory, a theory that, um, that she actually died 
Uh, oh my, yeah, that Miley Cyrus actually died, and they found a girl who looked just enough like her, got plastic <laughs> oh surgery, Illuminati man, and, and oh forced her to God. continue on and take on the role of, uh, yes. of Hannah Montana. And you know what? And that's why she lost her shit. And you and know what? Paul McCartney. Yeah, <laughs> Paul McCartney has not been. It, Paul McCartney has been dead since the since the sixties. And Jim Morrison and Elvis Presley are on a, a uh, an island, alive, yeah, like on an island in Peru. That's a, that's and uh, and Biggie is actually uh, yeah. just chilling somewhere. Yeah, he mm-hmm. lost a whole bunch of weight and became These Kanye West. Are yep. great, and though, then Tupac you know? is in a movie say, like playing himself. <laughs> 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 you know, theories I think are the best. Yeah, thing to happen. They're fun. <laughs> 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 you're, you're and you're like, what if? You know, what if? You never know. Me, I mean, you're like, one of these theories have to be true. I, mean. I do <laughs> I do believe that sometimes actors will um like for for I guess for example um Kane like well uh, okay not actors themselves but like ca- but characters like characters change the people who portray them change all the time. Yeah. Like um like what's his name? D- d- wasn't Mr. Noodle like three different people at one point? Oh from um from Sesame Street? Yeah. Or, or from, yeah, Elmo's, from Elmo. Elmo's world, mm-hmm. I, I don't know something like that. <laughs> or, yeah, but like you know, I like believe it. Or um, uh, what uh, Doctor uh, uh, Doctor Who? Yeah, okay, yeah, Doctor Who's another good good example. Well, I mean, it, it's different doctors all the time, but that's another. They, they change roles, you know. They change people playing the doctor. Yeah. Is it supposed to be? I n- I'd never watched Doctor Who. Is it supposed to be the same doctor every single time? Or is it a different... I, I, I'm not too sure. I've never watched that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't watch the show either, but I'm no... They're diehard fans, so I, I probably yeah. shouldn't have mentioned that. Cause <coughs> like, I don't know help us out, I know. Help us out, know. nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> is, it the same do- is it supposed to be the same doctor every single time? And then, I yeah. mean, some shows will just seamlessly... They'll just mm-hmm. randomly change the actor like nothing happened, like uh, Aunt Viv on uh, Fresh Prince. Yeah. Supposed to just, just like... <laughs> She just kind of. She, she just has a new face. She just has a new face, guys. <laughs> that, that actually reminds me of a soap opera. Soap operas do that all the fucking time. Where it's like, <laughs> it's like they'll have they'll have a white dude, you know, named Jason, and then all of a sudden now he's black. You yeah. know, like, like you didn't know that. You didn't yeah. watch last week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> I know you could have. You had missed last week. He was in the microwave. God, you know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> his um. brains, were, his brain was switched with another person. Mm-hmm. Right. No, my little sister's watching The Fosters, and they did that, and I'm like, wait, and like, who's that? And she's just like, oh, it's like whatever character it was. I'm like. But it's no. like a height difference because she's like, you got into a car accident. I'm like, a car accident. I'm like, okay, I can see like where it would like alter your face, but they didn't do like scars or anything. No. It's like he's a brand new kid. He's just a brand like, new dude. Four inches taller. And I'm like, it's incredibly noticeable. I'm like, they're not even the same height. <laughs> like, get in a car accident and grow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, just because you have a role doesn't mean that you can keep it. Oh, yeah. No, everybody's the, replaceable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one. Um, I was reading, and it's because he was like a really like crazy alcoholic. I don't know how true it is, and I'm just Who like, is this? oh, I don't remember. You don't I'm know the actor's name? No, mm-hmm. it, he, but he's like some like young kid. Um, I'm curious. Cause I feel like I know who you're talking about. I feel like I heard about this. Yeah, he's the kid that was in Wa- Wizards of Waverly Place. Oh, oh, I know who you're talking about. That now. Kid. Well, I, I he, don't know. He's an name, alcoholic. Yeah, supposedly. I don't know how to <laughs> Disney <laughs> stars, man. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Disney stars. <laughs> but then, so like they kept like wasting time and going to overtime. They're finally just like, all right. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm get over it. <laughs> All right, that's it. You're four inches taller, and it's not going to make you right? anymore. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Peace out, motherfucker. It's just so <clears throat> weird, like the transitions that they make and how mm-hmm. unrealistic, but people will still watch. And I'm just like, <laughs> all right. So the kid who was replaced is Jake T. Austin. Oh, okay. And I don't know who replaced him. I don't know. Some tall kid. Is that like your <laughs> worst fear? Some tall kid. Is that your worst fear to be replaced in a role or something? Yeah, because that means I'm fucking up. You know? <laughs> have you ever? Uh, okay, so have you ever had a role or were close to getting a role and then lost it like at the last second? Has that uh, ever happened to you? No, no. Thankfully. Uh, look at you, like, all badass. I'm like, like, I nah, wish fuck there that. was a funny story <laughs> that like was behind. Like, I go, yeah, I fucked up. <laughs> But no, no, you're, just, no, you're she just, just like, shit together. Yeah, you're just like, nope, I go in, fuck shit up. And they're like, all right, come back. Yeah. And then I just leave. I like to <laughs> separate the two because I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't want to overthink it. I used to do that a lot. And now I'm just like, whatever. If it happens, it happens. If not, then OK. 
And then on to the next one, right? Yeah. yeah. And then when I get it, I'm just like, I'm not going to fuck this up. <laughs> I'm only on here for a couple of days. <laughs> You're like, you What's the longest before. you've been on a on a? Um, It would be the horror movie, and I was for 14 days. You were on location for 14 days? Mm-hmm. Where was that at? It was here. Really? Yeah, just nice. in downtown. Nice. Was it in yeah. a was it in a studio or on lo- or on location? Like in between both. Oh, nice. So it was okay. actually where I work in downtown um, at the Los Angeles Center Studios, and then it was also in Valley Village. No, oh, that's so cool. So like we're at actual house. Okay. Uh, Not bad. Yeah. See, I don't know if I would uh, if I would do that now again. My grandparents uh, uh, let this film. <laughs> oh yeah. Get shot at our house, and it was like the most stressful thing ever. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine though they like, fucked some shit up too. They yeah, fucked they, up the wall. Mm-hmm, they like scratch. There's like scratches on the walls now. The like, wooden like, panels on the, the walls have oh wooden panels, and they were just scratched. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they took pictures of the way the living room looked before, and then just put shit back. Yeah, they just kind of put <laughs> random <laughs> shit back everywhere. Exactly. Your grandparents are like, wait. <laughs> I know, like this wasn't here before. Like we everything. <laughs> but it was funny because we could not, for the life of us, remember where everything went, mm-hmm. how to put everything back. We were like, we know this is wrong but we can't remember what was <laughs> right. <laughs> like all the pictures were out of order. <laughs> yeah, there was one thing. I was like, a, it was like a little like statue rock thing that my grandparents had and it was in this spot and my nana was staring at it for the longest time. And finally I asked her, I was like, what are you looking at? She's like, I don't know what it is, but I know that doesn't go there. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember where it went. <laughs> and you're just like, well... Guessing, <laughs> <it is mine. laughs> I was like, you and know, like, I, you live here. <laughs> I, exactly. I was like, dude, I, I've seen it. I know I've seen it too, and I, I, I couldn't remember either. I was, I told her, I was like, wait, maybe, no, it didn't go there because then we would put it in that spot where I think it would go, and it would still look wrong. It and would still look wrong, and like, I was I like, yeah, we're just and it like, could have like, been right, but because everything else was mm-hmm. wrong, we would, we would never know. So. <laughs> We just kind of made homes for everything else, and we're like, all right, the way the living room looks now. So for you, was like it was all their uh, personal stuff still in the house and shit. Uh, No, it was switched switched out. out. Yeah, they switched everything out Mm -hmm. just for those reasons, Um, and they probably had like twenty, fifteen people kind of carrying things in and out. Oh, okay. So So I mean, like they were had enough people to be able to be cautious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're probably like, I don't want to pay the like liability that we would have to if we fuck something up here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it sounds like it was a little bit more professional <laughs> than you than know. at least what we had at our house. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit. Let's <laughs> get the shit out of here right now too. <laughs> um, so okay, so um, being in someone else's house and everything, like how how difficult is it to pretend? Where that it is actually okay. So, for us, in like the interior of the house was one thing, but the uh, the exterior of the house was a completely different location. Was it kind of like that for you? Yeah, filming for you. Yeah. So like, um, well, so we actually the house was mainly all the exterior for like running through and like hiding and stuff like that. Um, whereas like the actual like where most of the shit happened was at the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, Most of the interior yeah, stuff was, was at the studio. Mainly, all we used was like their um, front door on both sides, indoor and outdoor, and then also their stairs because they mm-hmm. didn't want to waste the time to build like a fake <laughs> stair to mock <laughs> it. So they're like, okay, we're just gonna like use this section. So um, yeah, see that trips me out. Uh, that trips me out so much that is um, how with film they can pretty much design their own house just by mm-hmm. using bits and pieces of other people's houses. Yeah, yeah. they do that all the time. Like at Universal for uh, Wisteria Lane, those are all facades. Yeah, yeah. they're all exteriors. <laughs> Ooh, look at Facade. that! You're, you're remembering the lingo now. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's just because we've done the studio too, or so many damn times. So many fucking times, yeah. <laughs> no, you want to know what's actually really funny and like I know really like odd stuff, but. So the Wizards world just um, opened up at Universal Studios. Mm-hmm. Love that and place. And a lot of people do not know that it's not even a Universal. Like, Universal doesn't own it. No. Harry Potter really? is Warner Brothers. Yeah, it's Warner Brothers. Oh, but... Okay. Universal, like, pays, like, a shit ton of money to have it there. And, yeah. like, obviously, yeah. it works, you know, to get people in. And it, like, built the hype <laughs> and of do, everything. And to be, uh, actually, to be quite honest, too, it's... Uh, uh-huh. I feel like it's uh, <laughs> keeping Warner Brothers above the water right now, too. Because they're oh, last... Oh, yeah. The, uh, um... This is just rumor, but 
I've heard that Warner that Warner Brothers is kind of struggling right now financially because the last few movies that they've released have these flopped. last have been flops. And they've really been relying on the DC universe because they have they have the rights to DC. Yeah. Okay, so then yeah, it's Warner Brothers. So that's where Alex is working is Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we so just it I know together. there you go. Man, <laughs> solved it. <laughs> so um, yeah. So I've heard that right now they're you know they're kind of struggling because they, they have DC and the DC movies have been such big flops. Like it's <laughs> it's pretty sad. So I I it sucks that they have to result to. Selling out. Yeah. Well, no, it's on them for not having an amusement park. <laughs> you so know, actually, that's true. I saw uh, on a bus advertisement for Warner Brothers that said, you know, take a studio tour, $79 a person. And I was like, dude, that's like a price of a fucking theme park. Right? <laughs> like, you know, I would pay that price if you had like a fucking roller coaster in there yeah, that I, I can say. I was going to say, just like being on the Warner Brothers lot, I probably wouldn't pay for it. Um <laughs> Because there's not just I mean, there's not much. Yeah, I was gonna say like unless you're guaranteeing me like I'm gonna see you know fucking Keanu Reeves or Tarantino right? you know eating lunch somewhere like what's even worse? It's is not like, really worth it. I was it. so excited the day I worked on the Warner Brothers lot because I thought the Gilmore Girls set would be up and it wasn't. It was like um, uh. was painted all brown <laughs> and I'm like I don't even want to be here then. <laughs> <laughs> Why then, am I even here right now? And then they're just like oh come back and I'm like oh yeah that's. But it's also crazy though is that like there's so many different studios and so many different companies that use each other's mm-hmm. lawn. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, you have enough space, go back home, like stuff in here. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're actually doing more construction at Universal too. And and I've noticed it a lot. They don't really f- use the lot anymore at Universal. They do the the metro area, you know, yeah. like all the you know, the uh-huh. cities and everything. But like the sound stages, they they don't. Yeah, I mean, it's so weird. They don't use the sound stages. I mean, they'll do the, them they'll for do like commercials, the, the shows. Yeah, well, commercials the sound and stages. shows. They do the voice down shows. there, and they always say they do the Mindy project down there. We've driven by where they have like the we I, we peeked inside one of the sound stages, and there was a whole grocery store set up or like oh, a Walmart yeah. sort of thing. Um, so they use them. I just don't think they use all of them as much as they used to. But there's still ones that are definitely in use. I heard yeah. Superstore is the funnest show to work on that's the that's, that's yeah, like, story, yeah i heard it's really fun i have a friend of mine that he's like the second ad on there um and he's just like it's really fun that's awesome i'm like well <laughs> hello you know an actress <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, any open parts <laughs> any open parts just let me know <laughs> it's so fun but actually um a lot of people think it's who you know and i've just come to learn that it's not not like fully I it's, mean, obviously it's a big it, part of it but it's keeping yourself like knowledgeable mm-hmm. of like and networking like yeah, yeah just making sure yeah. that you're up to date with who's with who's doing what and everything like you okay like that person's writing a show he's the guy to talk to right now yeah so about tomorrow i'm actually i don't know if you guys watch the show love on netflix no so it's like a new series about um a girl who's like an alcoholic and a sex addict a mm-hmm. sex and love addict and um like my boyfriend for some reason really likes it and I'm just like it's like okay. <laughs> I was about to I was about to say it sounds like my new favorite show. Yeah. He <laughs> like, like really loves it. And so I actually got called to be on it tomorrow and then Hunter texted me today. He's just like, "Okay, so what you have to do is become really best friends with like the main guy character." And I'm like, oh, "Why?" <laughs> and he goes, "He's actually the writer. He wrote it and everything and he's the producer." And I'm like, oh, "Okay, I know who my new best go. friend's going to be." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. But it's just so funny. Now he, like, you know, we're in totally different things, but um, he's learning, like, my stuff, and then he, like, points me in the right direction when I don't do my research. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, how do you know these <laughs> things? <laughs> oh, I thought you were trying to get oh, my no. turn. No. Well, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, cut, uh, cut it right here for halftime. Um, we're in the topic of your all your projects and everything, so when we come back, we'll talk about that. Uh, for halftime, we got this song picked by Melissa. Uh, what was it called again? <laughs> BMI Valentine. BMI and I just, Valentine. I really like seasonal music, so I don't. Know. And so, I mean, it's not Valentine season, but we're close I, enough. No, I like listen to it all year long between like Halloween music. Oh, I should have picked the Halloween song. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they, yeah, no, there, there'll be, a, there'll be a next time. Yeah. Pretty sure. <laughs> Unless I just you know give up and everything, but uh, <laughs> so we'll we'll take a quick uh, <laughs> take a quick uh, couple minute break. This is Reliant K BMI Valentine. Be right back. Name's Taylor Jean, and I'm a 
an alcoholic, I'm a part of the machine that makes you grab your wallet when we write the country songs to keep the country folks singing along. I work on Music Road, and it's a tough road to hoe, and there's so many different girls that I would like to know, and so I check the single box, and I end up going out a lot. It's a lonely life, sitting on top of the charts, only every night. Exquisite taste, expensive wine, and now I'm whining like I don't know if I have a heart. Be a my Valentine. I know it doesn't hurt to have an awesome second verse, but I don't wanna write another line. I say be a my Valentine again. My friends are so uncouth to bear it all and tell the truth. It's a lonely life. Sitting on top of the charts, only every night. Exquisite taste, expensive wine, and now I'm whining like I don't know if I have a heart. Be a my Valentine. Be a my Valentine. Ah, nice little cool down right there, but we're back with Melissa Ray talking about the film industry, all this cool shit that's going on, cool yeah. movies, cool stuff. Um, we were talking about, you know, some of the projects that you've done. You've mentioned already that you've done a film with Adam Sandler. You've done a horror film that was just within the last six months, right? Yeah. And uh, well, and then we'll we'll get back onto the whole uh, typecasting thing right now too. Like, uh, the, these are kind of your first projects where you weren't typecasted for once. I mean, because you, like you said, you've always been typecasted as a fifteen or yeah. Like, I mean, so then I did Speechless on ABC, fifteen year old. Um, and then I'm trying to think, I did. Do you guys know that movie called uh, Wet Hot American Summer? Yes. Yes. So they're revamping it for like a 10 year later kind of thing. Um, and I did that. So really? that was actually like my, f other than Masters of Sex, because it kind of went back to being 15. And then mm -hmm. um, I think that was my like breaking point right before the holiday season where they're like, okay, really let's like center out to these things and kind of put a hold on these like childish kind of things. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when uh, you say they, you mean your, your agent. Yeah, your, your my team, com yeah. you know. Uh, <laughs> they're kind of like helping me with everything. And I was just kind of like, you know, unless it's going to make me millions of dollars, I really don't want to go over there again. <laughs> really? Why? Uh, well, I mean, like you just said, because you, you want to start making, yeah, like, making money. <laughs> no, it's not just that. It's just that like I'm trying to like break into like more of my age because I don't know. You're trying to not be pigeonholed into mm -hmm. that young kid yeah. sort of look. Yeah. And, you yeah, know, right? everybody's always just like, why? Like, like Disney Channel, once you get in, like, you're good. You're da-da-da-da. And I'm just like, but. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not, like, young, uh, like, young enough in the age where they want me to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you were saying earlier, it's usually, like, the 18 or 19-year-olds that they will play to be younger because they can ride them out until they're my age. Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, now I'm, like, 24. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Let me do like tw like nineteen twenty. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like that's more realistic to something I can stick to. And and uh, well, um, going into saying how some people like the fact that they can be typecasted, I feel like t being typecasted as a young person obviously is not going to pan out for so long. Like you said, like you're twenty four now. You know, yeah. it's it you're you're obviously going to start getting older, and you're going to start looking older. So mm -hmm. it's going to be even harder, especially for someone that like that's that's all they know is how to be, you know, a young person and everything. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, what am I going to do now? And I have this friend, though, that is 24 this week, but she looks like my 11 year old sister and she kind of mm -hmm. just stopped growing. 
and she's literally like really tiny and i'm just like i don't think you're ever gonna grow so i don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> when you start to actually age because you're always gonna be short mm -hmm. and like you're you still look 13 but you're only gonna look 13 <laughs> yeah. for so long then what are you gonna do yeah that's tr i mean exactly that's true like I, I wonder if anybody if they even think about take that into consideration you know that they're eventually going to be older and not look the same. Well, and that's going back to one of those things where it's like you would think she'd be perfect for this like 14 year old like Nickelodeon Disney Channel show. Mm -hmm. But then she got she always gets beat out by the 14 year old. The 14 year old. Mm -hmm. And but you would think you're like she looks like she's 12. She's perfect. She's like above 18, you know, like for legal reasons. You can work her all you want. Mm hmm. And they would still go for they the still take the 14 year old. She's been beaten out so many times. I'm like, I guess you just suck. <laughs> I'm like, no, I mean, maybe they're also <laughs> maybe looking for longevity, good. though, yeah. because they're saying, OK, well, she's already what, 23, 24. She might not look like this in two years. <laughs> yeah. She might look a little bit older mm -hmm. in two years. And we want someone who's that's only two seasons, pretty face. much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They want Although with Disney. They're always only three seasons regardless. Well, <laughs> now they are before yeah. they weren't. I think that's why I said earlier. I think that's why Miley Cyrus went crazy because Hannah Montana was on for a good while. Yeah. Long time for a Disney show because yeah. the money was so good and they brought them a lot of ratings, but it also kind of drove her. I'm sure it kind of drove her nuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, Corey in the house. Oh God! <laughs> How long did that one last? <laughs> Not even like a full was, season. Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like that was like a quick. Like they got around. through, like a yeah. Season. Yeah, they got through like half of it. And they're like, all right, this is this is bad enough. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I tried yeah. it. Yeah. They try so hard to do spin-offs of shows whenever a yeah, celebrity it just doesn't work. It doesn't. Um, who is the other one? Um, Demi Lovato. Oh yeah. Um, she she had her show about being a breakout star on a network yeah is a, that obviously irony yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but then um i think she had her her mental breakdown after touring or whatever so obviously she couldn't she didn't want to do the Dude, show anymore. i didn't even she know didn't. that demi lovato was a disney star to be honest she wasn't i think she's kind of like the arm that's kind of just there you know, she like hung out with the right people and then got in. They brought I her guess. in. <laughs> I, I remember they brought her in um, to do this kind. Of, it was like a short show that they do, like because I know Disney doesn't oh, really yeah, have like commercials. The three minute show. Yeah, or they have like those kind of like short little three minute shows, and they brought her on that. And I guess she she screen wow, tested right well or whatever, and then she got her role on. Um, Oh, what's that movie that she did with that Jonas person or those Jonas people? <laughs> Camp Rock. <laughs> that that Camp one. Rock? I'm like, what, what is it called? Right. See, so I, she. I had no idea. She did that, and um, Matt, you gotta know your <laughs> Disney man. <laughs> I, gave I mean, I call them Jonas people. <laughs> I, I told you, Corey in the house. That was it. That was my cutoff. No more. No more Disney after that, man. <laughs> after that show was canceled, yeah. you just couldn't do Disney yeah, anymore. I, uh, your I heart was, like, was broken. Fuck you, there it is. <laughs> My God. homie Corey over here don't got a show no more. <laughs> He's like, see, like, who, what, what is that kid doing now? Like, I think oh, he's. Shit, in, I don't even know. I, I last I heard, he got arrested for something. Really? No, no, I think that so. Wasn't him. It was no, the, I know they both did. Oh, um, they did? Orlando Brown got arrested. I know he's had his whole. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando I Brown. We want to talk up. to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> want to talk about somebody that's fucking weird now? Orlando <laughs> Brown. <laughs> yeah, but I last I heard, I think I heard something either that uh, oh, he got gosh. a DUI, not uh, Orlando Brown, uh, Corey. Uh, I, I, that's not even his real name. Um, Corey in the house. That's um, what I'm going to call him. Kyle Massey. That's what it is. It took me a <laughs> second. I was like, oh, <laughs> I suck with names. <laughs> Dude, I try. I mean, I'm, I'm trying. But I was like, yeah. it took me. I was like, no, it's not Corey, but it's like a. K k k and I just had to think about it. <laughs> it's like, well, actually, I think I, uh, that's kind of my fault that I always get mad at her when I'm like, how do you not know these people's names? <laughs> okay, at least oh yeah, the only one that I'm he like I'm terrible. With totally names. scolds me and reprimands me when I don't know certain actors' names. I'm like, oh, I know them. They're in that one thing. So now mm -hmm. I'm like, I like have trying to learn. Now and I have yeah, like, like I'm oh. I, now I'm teaching her like writers like who wrote what like Robert Zemeckis. She didn't know that Robert Zemeckis directed uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And I was like, dude, that well, was like one of my favorite. You have to go all the way back to the early 1900s, so you know everything. Jeez. Everything. Mm -hmm. the, the 19, what is it? The 20s? The it's 20s like, was when it first? I took two film history classes. Leave me alone. <laughs> I, I know the. I know some of the important ones. Let's just leave it at that. Like, <laughs> I don't to know. Go back to, for Matt. Mm -hmm. I, I guess so. I guess I have to retake the class then. You got to tell me who the Marx Brothers were. <laughs> what were the real names were? <laughs> I mean... 
no see i don't remember i know i know <laughs> it's like that's sweet and she's like you know no <laughs> <laughs> they were on the on the test though i mean i do remember we we talked about them we talked about like um silent the silent film yeah. era and everything mm-hmm. i mean i passed I mean, my does, test so does it even <laughs> really count like it, you know it, it, in the industry today like do people really ask you sorry <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> Do people <Ew>. really <laughs> see you should have had the headphones on to hear that it sounded it sounded a lot cooler <laughs> <in the microphone. laughs> no, um but like, do you really even need that to to get into the industry like do people really test you or mm. or if even if the like if they ask you and you don't know do they scold you see i think about, it would be important to at least have references or understand yeah, a little bit about everything I mean. and being like okay yeah. i need you to be kind of like this person and this film give me that vibe yeah. and they would hope that you've seen it yeah, i mean like, so what if someone was like give me jack nicholson and one flew over the cuckoo's nest you know like we i, I, I mean i've never even <laughs> seen that movie all the way through so i wouldn't even know i mean I mean, it <laughs> depends. Um, things I've been in so far, it's just kind of like we need you to be more like this. It's not like be more like this person. It's like do this. Not okay. So not so it's, specific. It's more yeah. like be sadder. Yeah, exactly. Be more solemn. Um, be more sprite. I feel for the people that I've like worked with or met so far, um, it's only like the asshole people that will like name drop and be mm-hmm. like. Yeah, like the this asshole person. People. <laughs> yeah, well, there's tons of asshole people yeah. in this industry. It's, fu- <laughs> yeah, it's funny that, but it'll just be like, I feel like people won't like look at me like retarded if I don't know something unless they're like an asshole that's going to be like, yeah, but I've worked with like this person. And oh, okay. Yeah. And, like, yeah. So you should know this. Like, uh, you know, have mm. you have you worked with people like that? And some yeah. Weirdos? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like directors too, like or Do, uh, even like a- even like big name actors like uh, Kevin Smith has this whole story about Bruce Willis. He doesn't even call him Bruce Willis anymore. He calls him that actor. <laughs> oh He's like, God. oh, that actor, because he because he worked with him on uh, on uh, that movie Cop Out. And he said that he was such like such an asshole all the time. He was he showed up. He he o- was always late to set. And like when he showed up, he was like, all right, like let's fill my parts. I need to get the fuck out of here. You know, and then you had Tracy Morgan there who was like, you know, enthusiastic about the whole thing. Like <laughs> he 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 had a what was it? Gout. He had gout, you know, filming that movie. So because he's a real bad diabetic. So his his foot is literally double the size of what it normally is. He's got to wear two different shoes on. And then you got, you know, Bruce, with that actor over here just being a fucking dick. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've dealt with a lot of those, you know. I feel um, like it's almost expected to come from actors, though, other mm. actors. I've met some, like, really great people that, like, are big enough named, like, to be a dick to me. And I would be like, okay, whatever. Um, but it's, like, smaller, like, principal roles. People that still kind of have a big name that I feel like have actually have that, like, demeanor. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, okay, I get it. Your paycheck's bigger than mine, but at least... I'm well, you person. said you didn't. You say that you met someone from Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Who, who, uh, do you remember who? who Ron was? Perlman. Oh, it was Ron. It was Ron yeah. Perlman. Oh, oh awesome, gosh. dude! I love That's him fucking awesome. dearly. And you know, he was so nice. Um, he he was doing Hands of God, and I really just wanted to meet oh, him okay. and take a picture. But he's like. I can't do it right and like in his like tone of voice and he's just like I can't do it right now. Um I'm like I can't do it right now. I'll yeah. And he's just shit. like um he's like come back. He's like the next time we film next week and he's like I'll definitely take a picture with you. Um and then they rapped so I didn't even uh. have to do it. <laughs> but um <laughs> See that's how good of an actor he is right? though, all right? Like, yeah. He was like, yeah, well, we'll be here tomorrow. You know what? We're not well, going to be here then, tomorrow. I didn't say what it was, but he was like in like jail attire and everything. Yeah. So he's just like if I like, I take a picture with you and it gets out on the internet like yeah, giving yeah, away a big like mm-hmm. key point and I'm like okay I get it and I'm like mm-hmm. well at least you're nice to me and you actually took the time to talk to me <laughs> yeah that's cool I mean he uh, he I mean seriously he could have just been like like no I'm fucking busy right now I'm in character get yeah out of here. you know and he was like setting his lines so like I was actually kind of rude um yeah but he was really <laughs> <guess>. nice <laughs> uh, another one that was really nice that I um, recently ran into was Will Smith um he was filming a movie Uncle Phil <laughs> did you see <laughs> right. the picture of him. Have you seen that picture of him that surfaced? I think it was yesterday. Somebody's no. Dude, oh my, oh my God. God. He lo- pull it up right now. He seriously, no joke, looks exactly like Uncle Phil from yeah, fucking I Fresh mean, no, Prince, like, dude. I 
see it, you know? Um, but they were filming at the studio a movie that I don't know if that's like out, so I can't, I'm not going to say whatever it's about. But um, I ran into him, and he's really nice. Uh, an even funnier story is the studio that I worked at, work at, mm-hmm. um, their security guards put paparazzi on like the drive on list. <laughs> and then approved them to come in and was like, Will Smith's here. Like, oh my gosh, this is where he's going to be. Like, go ahead and go. Right, that picture. Really does. <laughs> <laughs> right? I told it's you, he looks exactly like him. It's like at first crazy. Glance, it's crazy. so yeah. trippy. Mm-hmm. And just like, wait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was just like, what the fuck? That's what I, then now I'm, st- now <laughs> that's that what I was telling you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now, well, I was telling her, I was like, dude, that's it. They got to make a Fresh Prince movie, and Will Smith's got to play Uncle Phil. Like, uh, and Alfonso, dude. whatever, <laughs> yeah. has to play uh, Carlton Jeffrey. Carlton has to play Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be so dope. <laughs> you know, it would be pretty great. Even mm-hmm. if it was just like a short like snippet just to give us like something. That satisfaction, but that nostalgia. Like, yeah. oh, that's yeah. so awesome. <laughs> I know. Well, okay, so they the they yeah. they got the paparazzi yeah, on the, so the lot it up now. For all of us. Yeah. Um, so then there was like. Why? Because because was he just like, all right, I got I got to get the fuck out of here now. Like, I don't want my picture taken or shit like that. No, I mean like he was still around and everything. Um, but then there was like ten times the amount of security, like his hired security and not mm-hmm. studio security, and. I was just like, man, really? Way to fuck it up. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? And uh, the guy was like terminated. And I'm like, was it worth your job? And I'm like, yeah, it probably was. Because he probably got paid probably, really well. Yeah, probably to- did. Yeah. Those guys are probably like, dude, I'll give you like, bu- like What's 500 your salary? bucks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll double your salary right, right now. <laughs> Quick <clears throat> fuck, man. And I'm just like, shit, I should have thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So really quickly then, what? Who is your favorite? Who was your favorite person to work with? Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Yeah. He, he's yeah. your hands down fa- favorite. Yeah, you know he directed it and everything, and um, you know within that show you work with. It was a Half Madison production, so you work. Oh, with, like, so you got all the whole them. crew. <laughs> That's you know? so awesome. And then um, Jennifer Hudson's like one of the main actresses in it, mm-hmm. and my like scene was actually with her. So oh, I'm just, like, cool! Sitting there no and way! Like, oh my gosh! Like, let me not be like a fucking asshole, and <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll get out of your <laughs> let, way. <laughs> let me not fangirl right now. So hard. <laughs> yeah, and then so um, Adam Sandler's like giving me like direction and like critiquing me and all this stuff, and um, it was pretty great, you know. And I think, like, runner-up would be, oh, I don't actually think there's a runner-up. Nobody can take the cake of Adam Sandler. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, what else is pretty cool? And I'm like, no, it doesn't work. There's nothing else. Dude, these fucking noises are tripping me out. <laughs> oh, I know. I was like, what the heck happened? Um, okay. Uh, um, so... Working with favorite people. Sorry, I have to. I have to go back. The thing scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I think my people. the only person um, that could upstage Adam Sandler would be Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for some reason. For some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I was thinking Kevin Hart and um <laughs> well, and and what's his name from uh, King of Queens, Kevin um, Paul Blart. What is his name? Uh, oh God! Uh, you can't ask Kevin me. I suck with names. Kevin Smith. No, Kevin. No. Uh, Kevin. Uh, is it Kevin? I Kevin. can't remember. His, I, I I don't know why his name fucking slipped me right now. But that's who I thought of right now. I was like, I was like, really? And then you said, then Bacon came. I was like, oh, Kevin Bacon. I get it now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, my mom's like Footloose, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you not fucking <laughs> Footloose, man. But I'm like, not Footloose, Balto. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You know. Um. Yeah, I love Kevin Bacon. You haven't you haven't worked with him though, no. right? No, that, that, that'll I be. Think that's the only person that can mm-hmm. upstage working with Adam Sandler. Really? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think there's anybody else off the <clears> top of my head right now. Um. So, are you working on anything right now? Is there? Are you currently doing anything? Any projects? I am. <coughs> I'm working with Nickelodeon on um a pilot. Ugh, a Nickelodeon now. pilot. Okay. Yeah. So that's gonna be fun. Um. I'm closer to my actual age, so it's not that bad. I'm actually playing. <laughs> uh, yes, minor 19. successes. Yeah, right. You're getting uh, there. You're getting there. Like, oh yeah, like Nick Lowe, what are you doing? Like this, da da da. And I'm like, chill, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's not my norms. Uh, and then just love tomorrow. Um, last week I worked on an NBC pilot uh, with Sh- Paula Abdul. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, so man. that was actually kind of neat. Um, it's about like it's based in the eighties. About is she cool? At least yeah, yeah. she is okay. so nice. Oh, I bet she's really yeah. Nice. She seems like she'd mm-hmm. be fun to work with. She was so fun to work with. You know, it was a really long day, and she was in like these crazy like heels that you know kevin I james mean. that's who we were kevin thinking of <laughs> <laughs> thank you garrett <laughs> I, oh i'm that's live right now <laughs> all right i decided to, to go facebook live real quick i know i was gonna do that today but didn't do it um but yeah it's about in the 80s about the laker girls so but yeah she's it's about the laker girls yeah really yeah nah, that's cool i guess it was fun <laughs> who's uh, she like the <laughs> the sorority mom the house mom or something? in a way, <laughs> in a way. Um, like, you can't say much i'm hoping it gets mm-hmm. picked up i mean it'll definitely be a fun show um now uh, do you have are you a more like a regular part like if it does get picked up you'd be you'd probably be in it for most of the uh, fingers crossed yeah. there's no guarantees mm-hmm. which sucks but no hopes down yeah <laughs> but, but i mean it'd definitely be a fun role to come back to okay uh yeah because it it's a little out of like my normal zone it's like a very like upbeat like mm-hmm. peppy you know and i'm like I'm usually just pretty like chill but it was fun okay <clears throat> well the last thing then is there anything that you are kind of looking forward to in the hopes of getting something started like is there some sort of project that you are trying to get off the ground right now so I have a whole bunch, but um, I recently wrote actually a film. You wrote the film, like, yeah. it, and this is like uh, you, you didn't have a partner with it, like you didn't have someone write it with you, like it's gonna be I you and somebody else. I did it at first, but I brought in like a really good friend of mine <coughs> that you know I know knows how to do it because he mm-hmm. um, wrote actually a kids TV show that was picked up. Um, oh, nice. Okay. So that's really fun. And they so you're getting help from an experienced writer I'm, already. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I knew that I would screw it up. I knew I would leave plot holes, and he told mm-hmm. me that. And um, there's stuff because it's like a story that I'm close with that I he's just like, you're too close to this. He's just like, so you have um, to like know okay. how to separate the yeah. two. And because I would be stuff like, I don't want to add this in. He's like, but it'll make mm-hmm. it good. Because this is this is a, like you said, it's it's a personal story. It's a story that that yeah, you it, that's pretty much your life, you know, that you've yeah. experienced. Now, um, as on that note, is I was gonna follow up with: is it kind of more on the true side, or is it more of the? This it, is just my experience, so I'm making a story out of my experience. It is almost word for word the true story. Okay, There's so it's going to be pretty. There's a few things that are falsified due to family stuff and due to personal. I mean, identification, yeah, protected and, identities, um, and stuff. That I just alternated some things because I'm mm-hmm. just like, if somebody looked into it enough, I wouldn't want to cause any legal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I had to switch some things that like yeah. I was kind of pissy about, but I'm just like, you know what? In the end, and the, yeah, the story exactly. story's still getting mm-hmm. across. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, more than I would probably have could have imagined mm-hmm. or hoped for. So I mean, it's definitely on the good side, and they're trying to. We'll end it on this: that I wrote it as a film, a hundred and well, it would turn into like an hour and a half type movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have a meeting to possibly pitch it as a TV pilot. Oh, so, okay. So, I mean, it's not necessarily what I wanted to do because I don't think you can stretch it out long enough. Yeah. But, but I mean, but, it, you know, uh, Breaking Bad was only, what, eight seasons long? Exactly. It's not a, you know, it's still a great show m- millions of people know about. Exactly. So and it'll just, I think the outcome will leave people being like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So and that's how you kind of want to leave the audience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming in today. No, this has been yeah, this has back. been an awesome, awesome episode. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda, for being a, a beautiful you. co-host. <laughs> I try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can follow Melissa on Instagram at Melissa Ray. You can also uh, look her up on IMDb. Where where else can you find uh, uh, that's you? That's pretty much it. Really? I keep everything pretty simple. Right, I there cut you everything go. out pretty much out. <laughs> and then you can always follow me uh, at Rat Talk on Twitter. Uh, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Instagram is actually rat underscore talk, but I'm pretty sure if you just search up rat talk, it'll pop up. Um, you can always follow Amanda. One day she will fly. That's it. Yeah. One day she yeah. will fly <laughs> on Instagram. I'm still working on I'm trying to get my own uh, Instagram handle for like my acting stuff. Uh, you should. 
Yeah, I'm working on it. I already I claimed the hand. I couldn't get my actual Amanda Cano handle, uh, but I got not Amanda Cano. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I have it. I just I took the handle, but I haven't done anything with it. But stay tuned because I will I will be doing something with it soon once I have shit to post on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then uh, today's episode we're gonna end on another request uh, from Melissa. This is uh, Adventure Sevenfold. Which actually, <laughs> yeah, which is completely opposite of the earlier song. But you were saying that you wanted to uh, go see them at the Metallica show. I do. Which uh, me and Amanda are going to. So really? sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep, we got to tickets and everything. I'm to go with me. You should. It's going to be an awesome show. Well, I'm like, either that or I'm going alone. So. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Fuck it. We'll tailgate. And right. then you won't even notice that you're alone yeah, during exactly. the show. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going no matter what. It's like, I want a company. All right, so we'll we'll end it on uh, the Avenged Sevenfold song. Uh, originally, we we're gonna we we're gonna play a uh, critical crit- critical acclaim. Is that yeah. what it was? Okay, I was gonna say critically acclaim, <laughs> uh, crit- but uh, um, I couldn't get the uh, get the file. So uh, oh, no. we're <laughs> we're actually gonna end it on uh, oh, the f- God. song that <laughs> followed sorry, quickly yeah. after. Uh, almost <laughs> easy. I, I've got. I'm super gassy right now. Like it's You're always, always the, super it's gassy. always the end of the show too. Where I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like okay. <clears throat> All right, but we're gonna end on Avenged Seven. This is almost easy. Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night.